Okay, people. It is um, June 28, 2000 and... Hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll just start with this. Okay. This is Uncle John's chair, right? This is a health status of our nation. Our nation's youth. Okay. I'm on YouTube, not YouTube last night. I'm on Facebook. And, um, <clears throat> sometimes my, my, my kids, they, they let me use their accounts, right? So whatever. And I come across a live feed with a young lady, right? That uh, is doing a live video on Facebook. And I'm listening and I'm listening and she's crying and I'm listening. And as I'm listening, I'm coming to the realization that she's, you know, suicidal, right? And I'm like, okay, I've heard about these situations on the internet where, you know, people have been crying out, right? Because they're in emotional pain or physical pain or they're in pain, okay? Because the world, the world isn't providing the people that control the world, the people that manage the politics, the people that distribute the wealth, the people that create opportunities, gainful employment and, you know, viable living environments and, you know, and, and, and that type of stuff. They're failing the population because they're not doing their jobs, okay? What they're doing is, like Uncle John would say, they are looking at their portfolios and how many superannuation life insurance policies and how many benefit packages and how many uh, disability pension plans and, you know, they don't want two or three. They want ten in their people. And this is why our society is falling apart at the seams. It's already been documented that 90, 90, 95 or 98% or something of the population, 80% at least, is in dire straits. Well, the other 10, 20%, 1% has all the wealth. And that gap, 80 to 90, 80, well, we're just going to cap it at 80% to 20% is getting wider and wider. So in other words, it's going to be 85%, 90%. You know, my son is a, is a, is a lumberjack. He goes out and he cuts trees, right? For development. As the city, the city cuts down trees, right? Doesn't matter what municipality because he goes to different municipalities throughout the province and he cuts down old growth trees, right? So that rich people from wherever they come in from can build themselves their you know multi-billion dollar multi-million dollar housing and he was on one site where one family people owned miles of oceanfront up in the white rock area how the hell can a family own sand along an ocean front for miles when we have people dying out on the streets. And I know this for a fact because my daughter is out there dying on the streets. Right? As the old people are being medically kidnapped for their assets to prop up that 20%. As the middle class seem to think that if they facilitate the medical kidnapping of the old people, somehow that's going to ensure their little portfolios and keep their wages up to inflation. Until the next government comes in and does some more union busting and bust their ass out of the union. And bring in more immigrant workers to fill those slates, those, those slots. So in the meantime, as this political stuff is going on in our society and failing the general population, like I said, 4.6 people, 4.6 million people in the province of British Columbia, Canada, only 400,000 work for the public, uh, the, the uh, provincial government, <clears throat> but yet they're the ones to take more than 57% of the assets in terms of, uh, you know, the, 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 the budget, in terms of a provincial budget. So 57% more or more of the provincial budget is going to prop up 400,000 people out of 4.6 million people 
there's that gap, people. And that gap is getting wider because they're not satisfied with what they already have. They have to keep that status quo. So they do. They go after the elderly. They go after the children. You know, they ignore the sick on the streets. So anyway, I'm watching this video and I'm coming to the realization that this young lady, 20 years old, <coughs> is contemplating, con contemplating suicide. And she's saying goodbye. And she's not letting anybody know where she is. So, of course, the mother instinct in me kicks in, right? And I'm trying to connect with her, <coughs> you know? Let her know that I'm a mom, that I've had, you know, struggles. My kids are struggling. Life is struggle, right? A beautiful young woman, you know? It's okay to cry. Crying releases the salt from the body. It heals the body. It's God's natural way of healing the body. Just like those pine cones falling from the tree. That's God way of, God's way of nurturing the ground. And, you know, putting nutrients back into the ground. So I'm, I'm letting her know that it's okay for her to cry. You know? And that she, she you know, she's, she's deserving. Right? To have... A life right at such a young age the only thing is is so many young people and even including my own kids do not feel like they have a future anymore because they're being robbed of it people they're being robbed of it not only are they losing their loved ones through corrupt uh, government agencies that you know go in and kidnap children to prop up the child protective services or they're losing their grandpas and their uncles and their aunts and their grandmothers because you got to prop up the public guardian and trustees so that you know they can work in partnership with crooked lawyers and take the assets of the most vulnerable in society who paid their taxes all these years and designated, you know, powers of attorney that the healthcare system just wants to ignore because they want to keep themselves afloat. Young people are not stupid as to what's going on around them. They may not know all the details, people. They may not know all the stories, but they know that our systems are corrupt. They know that the chance of them being successful at a later date in future in terms of being a homeowner a business owner, you know, having retirement, having good health care, having good eye care, all these things is, is slim, slim, because that 20% up there wants to maintain on what it has by any means necessary. And they're failing their constituencies right across the board. And then when someone like me comes along with their nonprofit foundation, you know, instead of trying to help, you know, they gotta maim, they gotta humiliate, they gotta hurt, they gotta rob, they gotta take anything to oppress. Because God forbid, if I was successful at accomplishing what I've been wanting to try to do for the last 17 years, because if I was that young lady that who may not very well be with us today, right? Maybe there would have been some resources there for her. Because it's obvious that the people that are managing her can, her, her, her district are failing the youth in that district just like they're failing the youth in my district. Just like they're failing my daughter and many people like my daughter. And if you notice, I haven't been talking about my daughter too much these days. I will though, people. And when I do, you know, the trolls obviously will be clapping their hands, right? But let me say something about this. Sooner or later, this little troll network that's going around harassing thousands of people because I'm not the only one and I'm not too worried about that okay <coughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be imp um, there's gonna be things there's gonna be mechanisms implemented into the internet that's gonna control that 
that's going to catch these people red-handed. And these people are going to have to be held accountable for the harassment, the stalking, the threats, th just everything that they try to do to their um, amenity behind a nonprofit. They're like a pedophile. They're no different than a pedophile. If we're going after the pedophiles, we need to go after the trolls. Unless, of course, it's government instigated, right? To derail the population, to keep the population divided and fighting among ourselves, to keep the population paranoid, right? To keep the population uh, second-guessing themselves so that they never go outside of the box and try and accomplish something that they know that they can accomplish but are constantly being told that they can't. Because the ones that are running the economy or our constituencies just simply don't like competition in a capitalistic society. That's why I'm being harassed in my backyard over Andre's dirty toys. When in fact, all that is is grit from the tree, algae from the rain, and pine needles and that type of stuff, which just takes a little bit of soap, a little bit of water, and a scrub brush, and when I wash those toys and I put them in the shed, what is the city going to say then? Are they going to call them broken down old toys after they're clean? No, they're not. So don't be deceived. Because there's a lot of people being deceived. So anyway, I don't, I don't even know if I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say. All I know is that this young lady was distraught. I was helpless to do anything about it. And the things that I can do are being squashed by jealous, spiteful, um, power-tripping, greedy bastards that want to oppress, kill, murder, maim the most vulnerable in our society so they can profiteer and sit up there with their million-dollar bank accounts and somehow try and convince themselves that they are so much better than everybody else on this freaking planet. Well, that lady's life, if she died, is on their hands. Is on the hands of the city of Surrey. For the one that oppressed and mocks me, humiliates me, makes it hard for me to do anything in this freaking city, right? So that when I try and promote it out in the fucking community, outside of this city, they know I'm going to look like a freaking lunatic. Because they're just more interested in tearing everything down, ripping up all the trees, throwing people out onto the streets, giving them some fentanyl to kill them off to save the health care some, some healthcare system some money, right? So that the premier of this province can retire a rich bitch. As she desecrates the grave of my stepdad. Desecrates it, people! She got rich off of desecrating my stepdad. And she got rich off of desecrating my daughter, who's dying. I get people coming to my house all the time telling me that my daughter is sick. What can they do? I said, I don't know. I don't know what to do. The hospital, they just release her all the time. Every month she goes in for a freaking blood transfusion. She's bleeding out, people. She's caught up into the sex slave industry within Surrey. Because there's nobody out there to help her. And the ones that want to help her don't have the freaking resources. Because the provincial government and the municipalities make sure that those resources aren't there. And this is a problem all across the freaking continent. It's a problem in Canada. It's a problem in the United States of America. And this is why the young people, the 19, the 20, the 17, the 15s, the 25, the 30 year olds are exiting out. Put the blame, put the onus where it belongs. It belongs on failed politics that are raping the population of everything that is good in this planet. They are not providing opportunities. They are not providing hope. They are not providing wellness. They badger, they maim, they hurt, they attack, they pray. 
they wear you down. And when a strong one comes around like me, they come after you even ten times freaking harder. Because they don't want the nation to rise up against them. Because they want their little superannuation life insurance policies and their little disability packages. And they want the best of the health care. Because for some reason, they think that they were born on this planet and they're not fucking human. And they deserve to be somehow treated different. Uncle John was a humble janitor. A humble janitor. He cleaned the premier's office long before the premier was even fucking born. And look how that bitch repaid him. And that's trickling out. And how this is how I'm going to end it. Because I can go on ranting for an hour and it's not going to get me anywhere. But that's the way she treated my stepdad is trickling out across the nation and is destroying the lives of tens of thousands of young people. And last night, if that young lady is gone, lays in the lap of the premier of this province named Christy Clark for being an oppressive government that has made it impossible for me to do anything with a legitimate nonprofit under a legitimate trademark name because she's more interested in a smear campaign than she is about helping the youth, the elderly, the children, the families, the homeless individuals, about just her constituency in general.